We're hearing a lot about electrification at the moment. But did you know Toyota's had a petrol electric Camry hybrid around for more than a decade? So does this latest update get our buzz on or is it a shocker? Let's go and find out. The eighth generation Camry has been around since 2017, dominating what's left of the medium and large passenger car segments and resisting the rise of SUVs and utes. This update arrived last April and nowadays four out of five Camry models are hybrids. The flagship is this SL, which will set you back more than $50,000 by the time you get it on the road. That puts it up against some quality competition like Top End Mazda 6, Hyundai Sonata and Volkswagen Passat. The Camry's been a cornerstone of Toyota's Australian success for many years, and the hybrid was even built here for seven years. That all came to an end in 2017 when Toyota closed its Australian plant. Now, like every other model in the range, it's an import. Externally, there's not a lot that separates the SL from other Camrys. They all get a new grille and bumper, but the SL alone has this panoramic sunroof, 18-inch alloys, and rain-sensing wipers. Under the bonnet, there's this fuel-saving Atkinson Cycle 2.5-litre four-cylinder petrol engine. It's assisted by an electric motor that provides a little bit of extra power and a lot of extra torque, and that is really useful. The Camry Hybrid can also run up to about 30 kilometres an hour in pure EV mode, emissions free for short periods of time. The Toyota Camry Hybrid uses a second motor generator that acts like a CVT transmission. Sort of one big elastic gear to drive the front wheels. But there are computerised steps you can select if you want that old style gearbox feeling. It's a far cry from Camrys of the past in here, but fitting the price, there's a premium feel. Underneath all though, it's still Camry workmanlike. The SL is the only Camry to get power adjustment of the steering column, heating, cooling and ventilation of the front seats, and a nine-speaker JBL audio system. It upgrades to this nine-inch floating touchscreen, which replaces a much smaller screen that was set into the dash. In terms of legibility and taking your eyes off the road, absorbing the information and getting them back on the road, it's a vast improvement. And yep, the Camry Hybrid is one of those Toyotas that does get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although there is no wireless connection, or wireless smartphone charging for that matter. The Camry Hybrid's nothing too special when it comes to utilisation of space and functionality for storage. It's really saved all its special bits for the drivetrain. There are cup holders, door bins, a small centre litter bin, a glove box and storage area at the head of the centre console. As per most modern Toyotas, the Camry Hybrid comes very well equipped in terms of safety. There's nothing important missing here. When it comes to interior space and function, it's back here in the rear seat where the Camry Hybrid really impresses. No wonder Toyota sells so many of them as taxis and Uber cars. Not only do you get space, you get storage, controllable air vents and USB charging points. The SL is the only Camry Hybrid that opens its boot with the help of a bit of power. But closing it, you still gotta do manually. Inside, there's plenty of space and a small port through to the cabin if you split fold the rear seats. A temporary spare is under the floor. Okay, so far, so competent. Now let's take the Toyota Camry Hybrid SL for a drive and see how it shapes up. It became something of a running joke that every time Toyota launched a new Camry, it would call it all new, when it plainly wasn't. But the eighth generation really does deserve that description. We liked it in 2017, and we still like it now. The drivetrain is core to that appeal. The addition of electric assistance to the petrol engine has filled in any low-speed tardiness. 
The Camry Hybrid is an energetic accelerator that will hold its own in the cut and thrust of city traffic. Underpinned by a new architecture called TNGA, the Camry Hybrid SL really does steer and handle confidently. It's unrecognisable compared to Camrys of the past. There's a little bit of Mazda to the ride. It's well controlled without being too intrusive. It absorbs a bump or hole and moves on. And steering rack rattle, once a Camry curse, is just gone. Due at least in part to its petrol electric drivetrain, the Camry Hybrid SL is a quiet and refined place to travel. It's a hush cabin befitting the flagship of the range. So far so good, and then the Camry shows off its oh so appealing electrified party trick, almost unbeatable fuel consumption. Our average came out at 5.2 litres per 100 kilometres, which is simply outstanding for a big five seat sedan like this. And it's not only the drivetrain that keeps you sane around town. Light, low speed steering and a family of sensors and cameras help you with those in tight manoeuvres. Compared to the SUVs and utes most people buy these days, the Camry sits lower so it doesn't give you a view out over the traffic. But in terms of comfort and ease of driving, it outpoints most of them. And here's another piece of good news. The warranty coverage extends five years and for unlimited kilometres. Cap pricing means the first five services cost a measly $1,100. Although be aware the next three services will cost you more than $1,900. All in all, it's fair to say the Camry Hybrid SL experience is a bit of a buzz. It does many things well and proves what a benefit even a little bit of electrification can be. But here's the buzzkill. The Camry Hybrid is not fashionable, so a lot of people will never even consider it. They should. This is a refined car. It's a teeny bit electrified and a whole lot sensible. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos and let us know what you think in the comments below.